Well, hello and uh, welcome to Eagle Soar. I'm John Barr and we're excited about this program that will help teach and train many people um, about the idea of deaf ministry. I've been involved in deaf ministry now since, wow, let's see, I learned sign language back in 1976 and uh, wow, has the deaf ministry changed since then. I learned in my church and then began uh, interpreting and teaching classes and really it was awkward and slow and uh, at that time we didn't know very much about deaf ministry but God is good and God has led me into the deaf ministry and in 1981 uh, I got involved in deaf ministry full-time and then in 1984 my wife Diane and I began traveling in deaf ministries and we established deaf ministries all over the United States. We traveled in other countries. We've taught sign language to many, many different people. And the point is not sign language. The point is deaf people. I'm hearing there's no family. I don't have any family that's deaf. And I first met a deaf boy at the YMCA and we were swimming together and we got to know, uh, know each other and our parents became friends and that was the first deaf person that I met. At that time I had no idea how much of a world of deaf people were out there. Tonight I'd like to share with you the idea of why have a deaf ministry. Why should your church have a deaf ministry? Why should you be involved in deaf ministry? What's the point? What's the reason? Is there a Bible reason to be involved in deaf ministry? Well, yes, there is. And tonight I want to share some of those ideas with you in our first lesson here of uh, Eagle Soar. First of all, let's pray. Father, we ask that you'll help us tonight to, as we study, as we learn, help more and more people, good churches, be involved in deaf ministry, reaching deaf people and helping people to understand about Jesus Christ, seeing lives changed, and seeing your will accomplished. We pray that you'll bless this time together tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So why have a deaf ministry? Well, First of all, let me explain this, that the deaf ministry is not an easy ministry. Uh, this last week, a pastor, he called me and he said, I've been interested in a deaf ministry. Would you tell me more? And I began to explain to him the many different things about a deaf ministry. And, and uh, I could see he was kind of like, whoa, that's hard. Yes, deaf ministry is difficult. It's not an easy ministry. You won't have thousands of deaf people coming to your church. Uh, also, the deaf ministry is a little bit discouraging for a hearing person getting involved in the deaf world because um, it, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of work involved. There, sometimes you don't see a lot happening. Uh, sometimes the, the ministry is slow as it grows. And understand that the deaf ministry is unique and uh, it's, it's a ministry to a people that many churches just ignore or overlook, and they don't see the need for that. And sometimes maybe you'll feel like you're the only person that's, that's interested in, in reaching deaf people with Jesus Christ. Your pastor would not understand, or the other people in the church that would not understand. But um, so as I began to explain to this pastor, he said, wow, it, I, I think I understand, really, if you want to be involved in deaf ministry, you need to be, and he said the words, all in. Uh, he said, you have to just get involved. And I said, well, yes, you cannot play with the deaf ministry. The deaf ministry has a lot of demands. Uh, really, as a hearing person, uh, it's, it's hard. Hearing culture is very different. We feel maybe... Uh, independent, more. Deaf people are very closely knit, very uh, close in their community, and deaf people will, uh, will, will come to you as a hearing person. They'll talk to you and they'll say, hey, 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 I need this, I need this, and, and 
if you love deaf people, it's not going to be hard. It won't be discouraging. The demands, you'll go along with that because it it's a people that needs Jesus Christ. And so, also last, uh, the, the deaf ministry, uh, it can be, sometimes you can be disappointed. You can, you can say, wow, is it really worth it? Is, there's a lot of effort. Maybe a pastor would say, well, there are a lot of people in, in my church hearing people, and I can minister to them, and the deaf people are so very few. But we're going to answer that question as we go forward tonight. It can be a little bit disappointing, but if God calls you to the deaf ministry, go ahead and get involved. So why have a deaf ministry? Well, first of all, you'll see here, God loves everyone. God so loved the world. The world also means deaf people. Deaf people are scattered around the world. And God loved these people that are deaf. God wants deaf people to understand about Jesus Christ. Deaf people need to know that God loves them. And so the first reason why I have a deaf ministry is because God loves deaf people. Also notice that the Great Commission includes all people. All people, deaf people, are included in all. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations in Matthew chapter 28, 28 verse 19. In the missions conference, the church says, We're going to send a person to go to this other country, and we're going to send a person to go over there. Well, really, the person does not go to a country. They go to the people that are there. And they have to learn the language, and they have to learn who those people are. And they get involved over there, and that's their ministry. And it's the same with the deaf. It says, go ye and teach all nations, all people groups. Doesn't matter the race, or the language, or the culture. And yes, deaf people have a different culture than hearing. And so, and maybe in one of our classes here on Eagle Soar, we'll explain that idea of deaf culture, how it's different than hearing people. And here's something that we found, we've said it many times here at Silent Word Ministries, and that's the idea that all the world also includes deaf people. The deaf people in your community the deaf people in your country, maybe you're in another country and you're watching this. Ted Camp, Ted Camp began deaf ministry. Why? Because he was a pastor himself and he saw, oh, there are deaf people that live near. Somebody has to be burdened for them. And so Ted Camp agreed, accepted, and he began ministering to deaf people that were there. And God blessed that wonderfully. Deaf people, understand, why have a deaf ministry? Because God's great commission includes all people, also the deaf. Why have a deaf ministry? The third thing, deaf people can glorify God. Sometimes people think, oh, deaf ministry, a lot of work and work and work, but the truth is that deaf people can honor and glorify God. God. Oh, how exciting it is to see a deaf person learn his Bible and then begin to teach or to explain the Bible, explain to another person, and the other person benefits, gets saved, grows, or learns. The Bible teaches that God has, used, has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the mighty now, we're not saying that deaf people are weak. No, that's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is that some people think, I'm up here and deaf people down here. God uses those people to confound people's plans. God can use deaf people. God can help deaf people 
to help other deaf people, to help other deaf people uh, over and over and over again. Deaf people can give glory to God. And why should we have a deaf ministry? Because deaf people must know that someone cares for them. I was talking to somebody just recently, deaf person. And this deaf person, he was very discouraged. People were against him. His family did not understand him. He had a deaf family, but his family didn't understand him. A lot of frustrations. And he called me. He said, said I need to talk to you. He needed a friend. He needed somebody to care, to care, to love him. In fact, at the very end of the conversation, as normal with deaf people, we say, I love you. And that's, it's fine. It's all right. We say that a lot. But it means, it really means, I share my heart to you. And thank you for talking. Deaf people need to know that somebody cares for deaf people. Do you care? Do you have a burden for deaf people? This is a sad uh, verse here. In, in Psalm 142, verse 4, it says, I looked on the right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. And it says there, no man cared for my soul. No man cared for me. And I wonder how many deaf people there are in this world that want to go to heaven, that want to know God, that want to have that fellowship with Him, that want somebody to love them. God loves them, but who will tell them? So, deaf people must know that Somebody loves them. Why have a deaf ministry? Number five, when you reach one person, it's not just one person. There's a family associated there. There are friends that are associated with them. I remember when we started our deaf ministry back in Florida in many years ago, 1976, uh, when we learned sign language. And it was very interesting when one deaf person would come and then all of a sudden he would invite his friends and they would come as well. And times have changed, yes, but when you, when you reach one person, there's a family associated there. And there are many, many people around that one deaf person who, with your ministry, you can reach this one, but you can also reach those around as well. Here's an interesting verse in, in Acts, Acts chapter 8, verse 31. Here, Philip was, uh, was running and he got near uh, the man from Ethiopia, Ethiopia, and he was running alongside and this man was riding in a chariot. And he said, uh, he, Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And this man, he said, how can I understand? I need somebody to guide me. The Bible is a little hard for deaf people to understand. English is a second language. Deaf people, when they read, they get a letter in the mail. I have friends. They're not all deaf people uh, like this, but, but, but many deaf people have English is very difficult. I could show you a text on my phone today that a deaf man, he, he contacted me and I was reading. I said, what does he mean by that? And I text back to him and he texts back and it was like, we're not connecting. It was like, boom, just, it was a disconnect. It was communication breakdown. And the English is hard for deaf people. I mean, hard. Now, you have many deaf people that will learn and, and go to college and, and read English well. And uh, we had a deaf man, man that traveled with me one summer, and my wife and I, my family. 
and he traveled with us and he would read one book about this thick every week. And wow, and he read a lot and he was a very intelligent man. So, but some deaf people have a hard time with English. How will deaf people understand the Bible? They need somebody to explain it. And really, a person that's like this, that's not saved, how do they understand? They need somebody to explain it clearly. Oh, how interesting. So many times, explain the Bible, explain the gospel, explain about Jesus and heaven, explain about sin. And a deaf person, and you can see their face, and they say, I want that, I want that. Because they understand, because somebody took time to explain it. And when you when you reach one person, you can reach other people around. Why have a deaf ministry? There's another reason. Deaf people need, and this is the word disciple, not discipline, discipled. Discipled. What that means is somebody has to show them the right life from the Bible to show them and then, ah, and you can teach them, and then they can copy God's word and follow a right life in the Bible. Deaf people need somebody to show them verse by verse by verse, explain and show. The same as the hearing people. A person that's hearing, he recently knew, uh, gets saved. How does he learn? How does he grow? Somebody has to explain and teach them. Well, the same is true for deaf. Somebody must disciple the deaf. Now, as a hearing person, our job is to teach a deaf person so they can teach another deaf person and pass it along like this. Very often, hearing people are very awkward in the deaf world. Who can tell a deaf person better? Hearing to explain or deaf to explain to him? A deaf person can explain it clearly much more and better than a hearing person. So the goal is to teach all nations. We teach, we teach one, and then they go and teach another. So we have to teach them how to teach. Disciple, disciple, and there's so much involved in that. Why have a deaf ministry? Because deaf people have soul, soul. The Bible says that all have sinned. I remember in one church before, it was very interesting. I, I preached in the church and I got finished and a, a hearing man, he came up to me and he said, John Barr, I have a question for you. Sure. He said, don't you think that God will understand and overlook if a deaf person is not saved? God will understand. God will accept it. It doesn't matter. I was shocked. That's not right. All people have sin. And the Bible explains that it is appointed unto man, to people, once to die. And then after this, the judgment. There's no excuse. A deaf person cannot arrive in heaven and stand before God and say these words. God, I'm deaf. I, excuse me, I have to go into heaven. And God will say, you're the same as the hearing person. A deaf person has a soul. That soul will live someplace forever. Which? And so, because a deaf person has a soul, somebody must tell them. Somebody must reach them. And that can be a deaf person to tell them or a hearing person to tell them. Maybe you're awkward with your signs. Doesn't matter. You can be involved in the deaf ministry. Understand, let me take an aside here for a second. Understand, when we're talking about deaf ministry, it is not all about interpreting. You see an interpreter in church, and many people think interpret in church, that's important. That, that is the deaf ministry. That's part of it. But the deaf ministry is so much else, all of these things. To love deaf people, to be around deaf people, to care for their soul. 
deaf people have a soul. They're not the same as a dog. Don't exclude. Here's an interesting phrase. It says, whom should we exclude from the gospel? Is it right for us hearing people to exclude the deaf? No. Is it right for a deaf person to say, oh, they're hearing. I don't care about them. No. Who is it, is it all right who we can exclude and just pluck from the gospel? No one. They have a soul. Why have a deaf ministry? Because Jesus had time for one deaf man. In Mark chapter 7, the scripture says this, And they bring unto him, Jesus, one that was deaf. And it explains the story, what happened. And Jesus saw all of these people that were around, many people thronging Jesus. And with all of those people, a group brought one deaf man and he came before Jesus. And Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus took him aside from the multitude and helped that one deaf man. In that time, there was no sign language, so Jesus healed that deaf man. He could hear. His ears were opened. I think it's interesting. It doesn't say he became hearing. It says his ears were opened. That's an interesting idea. Every deaf person is important to God. Let me challenge you. Don't be too busy that you neglect the deaf. Don't be like, oh, I don't like that person. And maybe as a deaf person, you're watching and you say, oh, I like this one, I like this one, I like that. I don't like that person. I remember one time before I, we were starting a deaf ministry and a deaf man said, uh, said, you can invite my friends. Yeah, over here, good deaf person. He can come. And over here, good deaf person. He can come to church. Over there, bad deaf person. No, he can't come to church. And I stopped him. I said, wait. The deaf person is bad. He needs to come to church. And this guy's like, why? Why bad deaf people come to church? It was very interesting. And I explained to him, I said, Deaf people that are bad need to come to church. They need to learn about Jesus. God will change their lives and they become good. It's like, whoa. He said, okay, fine. We'll invite him. Don't neglect deaf people. Why well, have a deaf ministry? Number nine, God calls some people to go to the deaf, to reach deaf people. The Bible says here in 1 Corinthians, it says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. God wants deaf people to be involved in his work. God wants deaf people to be able to understand his way. God wants deaf people to be involved in the church, to join the church, to come to church. And God calls some hearing people to go to teach deaf. Sometimes deaf people are resistant of hearing people. I get that. I get that. But the truth is, God uses hearing people to influence deaf people. If you ask, go ahead, ask a deaf pastor, who showed you about Jesus Christ? Ask a deaf deacon, who showed you about Jesus Christ? Ask other church members, deaf people, who showed you about Jesus Christ? Many times, 
it was a hearing person that first began and explained the gospel. Alan Snare, uh, I think I think you're going to get to see Alan Snare in his testimony of his life, and it's very interesting that that his life. Uh, we have a DVD with his tes testimony on it, and he says that his sister-in-law uh, was just burdened, and his family was burdened, and they wrote, 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 and somebody who was hearing, who did not know sign language, was trying to help Alan Snare, deaf missionary, now, but before, he didn't know. He was 20 years old when it was the first time he saw an interpreter in church. Alan Snare was, was about 20 years old when he first understood and accepted Jesus Christ and became saved. God calls some to go and help the deaf. So what's involved? Well, if you, want to, if you want to reach deaf people, a hearing person, you want to get involved in the deaf world, first you have to learn sign language. And not every person can learn sign language. Some are slow, some get fast. We understand that. But all can try. And if you're going to reach deaf people, you learn sign language. And then go, go. Some people learn signs and they're afraid. And say, I can't communicate. I can't. I, I, Learn signs and then go into the deaf world. They may look at you and go, hmm, that's fine. <laughs> and, uh, and really, it's interesting. And my, my, deaf, my deaf friends, I'm happy to have deaf friends. Friends that I love for many, many years who are deaf. When I first got involved in deaf ministry, I was really awkward. And they were very patient. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> and they laughed at me. Look, God called me to go into the deaf world. And I obeyed. I went in. And God has blessed. And so God calls some to go to the deaf. Let's tie this all together. Why have a deaf ministry? I said before it'd be difficult, it could be discouraging in several things, but it also can be whew, delightful. It's exciting watching a deaf person accept Jesus Christ and be saved. It, when you explain about Jesus Christ, you explain to a deaf person, you, you show the verses and you explain it, it becomes clear. It's interesting watching the face go from Because deaf people use their whole face. And you can watch a deaf person become saved and understand. And it's the deaf ministry can be such a delight when you show a person how to be saved, when you show a person how to change their life, when you help a person stop a sin, when you help a person follow God, when you help a person learn to give to God, you help this person and their life changes. Oh, what a delight it is. The greatest need of deaf people, what do you think it would be? The greatest need of deaf people, it's not uh, a hearing aid. Deaf people don't need, the greatest need is um, to become hearing, no. The greatest need of a deaf person is to be saved, saved, to have Jesus Christ here, to do this, to have Jesus living within the Holy Spirit of God working in the heart. The greatest need of a deaf person is to be saved. Why have a deaf ministry? Well, it's because deaf people people, deaf, deaf people, maybe you could sign this with me, okay, deaf people, they are people, it's not like hearing, deaf, divide, deaf people are people, 
and they need Jesus Christ the same as you. So what do you do? You learn sign language. Some of you can learn sign language, and you should. You're hearing people, you've been back off, back off. Learn sign language. We have programs here at Silent Word Ministries can help you learn sign language. And then maybe your church needs to start a deaf ministry. How many people do you need? Like deaf people, they come. How many people do you need for a deaf ministry? One. If one person is there, teach one. You say, well, is, is, is it worth it to teach one? Yes. That person knows that it's worth it. And then, so start a deaf ministry in your church. Now, not every church can have a deaf ministry. We understand that. But if God has burdened your, your heart and there's no deaf ministry in the area that's teaching about Jesus Christ and God has burdened your heart, then start a deaf ministry. And you can also support a missionary to reach deaf people. There are missionaries, deaf missionaries, and hearing missionaries that are going around this world explaining the gospel of Jesus Christ to the deaf. And so you can support a missionary to go, to go for you. Maybe you say, I'm awkward, I can't learn sign language. Then support a missionary to go into all the deaf world. And then you can help Silent Word Ministries. Help us financially, Help us with your prayers. Help us. You could come and volunteer and get involved in the ministry here. Maybe God has called you to, to reach out to the deaf world. Maybe God has touched your heart. I need to become a missionary to the deaf. Contact us. We would love to talk with you and, and, and find out how we can help you get involved in the deaf world. We need hearing people. We need deaf missionaries. And so help us as we help you. Hope you've enjoyed this first lesson of Eagle Soar. And I uh, wanted to say this just in a short time. Jim Braceland, Jim Braceland, on the same Facebook page, look at Silent Word Ministries Facebook, Sil Silent Word Ministries and uh, there will be a post there, and it'll take you back to the same place. You'll see uh, a video of Jim Braceland teaching. It'll be good and wonderful, and it's ready right now. So when we finish this, you can go back and you can see it, and it'll be, it'll be ready and posted for you. I wanted to say this. Visit our website, silentword, silentword.org. We have so much there that can be helpful to you. Maybe you have questions about deaf ministry. You'll find things there at the, at the website. We have so much available in books and videos and different things that will be helpful to you in deaf ministry. And so I'd like to invite you to come and visit us here. Come and visit our office and help us as we reach the deaf world for Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for being here tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Lord, we pray that you will send more laborers into this deaf world of people who need Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that you will help deaf people to get involved, help hearing people to get involved, help that more and more and more deaf people will understand about Jesus Christ. And Lord, if you're calling someone right now, you are calling them to come and become a missionary to the deaf or to, to help us in our ministry. We pray, Lord, that, that you will help them to go ahead and do it. Help us as we serve you and bless as we continue to study now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next is Jim Bryson. Keep watching.